Hello and welcome back to the Roku Report Extra podcast. Um, I'm doing this off a phone this week. It seems that my laptop has well and truly gone the distance, but um, nonetheless, we've powered on and we've got a really special guest this week. Normally, we have a fan. We have got one of those, but we don't. Re- we rarely, rarely get a chairman on the show unless it's ours. And I've got Andy Holt, chairman of Accrington and Stanley. How are you doing, Andy? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm great. How are you? Looking forward to Saturday. Are you? I am. I can't wait, in fact. I heard it's the biggest crowd you've, you've ever had. Is that right? Yeah, it, it is. By, by far, to some tune, really. The stadium's only just been increased to, to all 5,500. Five, sorry, 5,400. And uh, every ticket sold. So that's fabulous for us. Is it officially the smallest ground in the Football League? I don't think it is. I don't think it is, to be honest. There is one smaller. Uh, it might be Wimbledon or somewhere like that, but, but there's uh, definitely one smaller. Uh, so, so at uh, 5,400, I'm, I'm proud of the extra four. Mind you, we used to say it were 5,060, but you come to God, I mean, we are sure, and I don't know, who, they must have bribed the uh, people that worked out how, to put, how many people you could get in the stadium because we, we had the stands recounted, rechecked and recalibrated with safety and, and we couldn't get that many in. So, so we expected to have 5,600, uh, but, but in reality now, we're back to 5-4. And it's, it's been quite a jump up the leagues though, hasn't it, to be fair? So it's I suppose it's not that surprising that it's one of the smaller ones, but I, I'm really looking forward to it. Not in a not in a way that I'm, I'm looking forward to going to a smaller ground and terraces and stuff like that. It's just like, it for me, it's back to the like the days of when I was growing up in like the mid-90s and for the full will end, and I know we were like nearly 20,000, but um, I've heard some really good things. I've never heard anyone come back and say they had a bad time at Acton and Stanley. I'm supposed you're biased, but um, I'm looking forward to having like a bigger way end. <laughs> well, we, we, you, you've got two six, uh, 2,600, and we, we've two 800 uh, at the place. And, and uh, it is a throwback, is Accrington, and we don't want to lose that. We have a charm about us. You know, some people would say it's. Uh, you know the facilities aren't that great whereas we say we think they're really good you know you don't have to have we know them folk you don't have to have things of no. absolute beauty in giant stadium to have a great time so so we're really welcoming uh folk and people enjoy coming i mean i as soon as that one came out you know you look at like certain fixtures and for your way days and because we've plummeted so fast you know admittedly we don't know, or we're starting to learn now, but we didn't know a great deal about League One at the time when we, we did get relegated. And I think for me, Accrington was one of the stadiums that I immediately looked at because it was like, we've never been to grounds like this before, and not in my lifetime anyway. I mean, we have before, um, but it's what football's about, isn't it? It's like, it seems like a bit more fun. Everyone's really looking forward to Saturday. It doesn't matter what league it's in or how big the stadium is. Everyone's really excited for Saturday. Well, I, I mean, I think we're both there on, on ability. Uh, so, so, I'd agree. You know, you've, you've had a bad run and we've had a good run and, and I hope we don't bounce off you and set off backwards and uh, and you bounce off us and go back up. So so we, we, we are going to give it a, a great shot. But, but I mean, at the end of the day, they say the league's never lie and, you, and you're, a, you're a massive club. So, so for a club like Accrington, that uh, only joined the EFL in uh, well, what was the Football League in 2006. To, to be at these heady heights on, on the budgets we've got, and you've got to say budgets aren't as big as yours, but to be at these these heady heights is fabulous. It's great for our town, it's great for our fans, it's great for our local community, and it's great for all for business around our area to bring 2,600 down from, uh, uh, from Sunderland. I mean, we had a fabulous day against Barnsley, and th- these for us are, you know, what what would be to anybody else just a normal run in the mill day. Uh, uh, you know, we're living the dream. It's fantastic. And to be fair, you know, you say it's been a, it's been a, a quick plummet, and it, it's great for you where you're at. But at the same time, I think you're more than holding your own as a football team as well. I mean, it wasn't too long ago you were fourth or fifth off top, which is, and I mean, you're 11th at the minute, which is a great achievement considering you've just came up. I think you're doing really well. And there's a really tidy team there as well. And I think war betide anyone that would would look at the size of the stadium and how quickly you've come up and all that sort of stuff. I think you, you've put some teams to the sword this season and I think you've done really well. I think any promoted team to do as well as that in the league that they've come up. But are you still looking towards promotion or would you be happy where you're at at the moment come the end of the season? I'd be happy. I'd be happy. Yeah. I mean, whatever happens this season, we're finishing a better position than last season. 
So, yes. so we're going in the right direction. But but I'd be I'd be happy mid table. But I don't think that's where we'll finish. I think we will finish higher. I mean, we've lost a lot of points this year through, uh, you know, through lack of experience and, and and maybe not having that cutting edge just as much. But we created massive chances. We, we you know we have a fabulously tight knit squad, a great management team, and uh, the the morale in the place is uh, is on fire. You know, the the, the morale around the area is great, and and. Uh, Everybody be looking forward to it. It'd be a massive atmosphere, and, and and you know we're not where we are through luck with it. We're where we are through uh, through graft. Uh, you're touching before on the, the spirit around the place. Now, from the opposite side, re- rewind seven months ago. I think we were probably the polar opposite. Um, Stuart Donalds obviously came in, and so far he's done a really terrific job in, in reigniting that spirit. And what? What I was quite interested in from your perspective and accurate and what what sort of I don't want to say state, but what what position was the club in when you took it over, and how do you begin to build that kind of mentality where there's just so much community and spirit that gets you through the leagues? Uh, when I, when I joined Accrington, I was a lot luckier than Stuart, insofar as uh, we we came from such a low place in terms of not being able to pay the uh, water bills and electric bills and council rates and not paying the wages and no beer and no pies. and So, so we, we were in such a such a poor position that whatever I did had to be had to improve it. So, so I was fortunate in that. It weren't a deliberate plan, that. Uh, but, I, but I was fortunate in that respect that by, by, you know, by slowly improving it, it we've we managed to get morale going in the right direction. Now, if you start, it's a club like Sunderland, you've got to kind of get it right, otherwise morale can keep going the wrong way, you know, because you're a long way off bottom. In fact, you're a, you know, you're a premiership club in waiting as far as, as far as I can see. So, so Stuart's uh, got himself uh, a really fantastic club that he, and he's got something to work with and I think he's going to do a great job. He, he's, he's doing, a, he's been a, in, in communication with fans and, and it's, it's a place that I have to be uh, in, in touch with uh, the local community and the fans because, uh, you know, we've got to tell them what we're doing and what we're trying to do and what the uh, what the club's about, what it means, you know, why we're doing what we're doing and, and, and really get them involved. And you don't get them involved if you don't tell them why you're doing things and what you're doing and how you're doing it. And, and give them the opportunity to criticise or give them the opportunity to applaud. I've always found that if you explain to people what you're trying to do and how you're trying to do it, you know, they give you a benefit of the doubt if things go slightly off path and you can you can talk to them again and say, look, that didn't work, let's move on and do, and do something else and carry on along the road. So, so you know, I, I like that in Sunderland now. I think uh, when, when things are going bad, it's always, it's always tempting to uh, ignore the fans and, and not talk to them because they haven't really got a lot of good things to say to you and, and it, it can get tiring. So, so when things are going bad, it's it's all too easy to, uh, you know, kind of go go off radar. And I hope I don't do that. And it, and it's great to see that uh, Stuart's not doing that up there. I was saying before about you know this is an extra podcast, and you're the first chairman we've had from another club. But it's it's weird we've had our chairman on five times in the studio, and I think that there is a big. It's a big thing when you have the like the figurehead of the club, you know, such as yourself at Accrington, Stuart at Sunland, communicating with the fans and, and being honest. And you, you touched on something that was really bang on before, I think. You said people will give you the benefit of the doubt if you're open and you're honest about things. And I think that's really where Stuart Donald is, is winning Sunland over. I mean, it wasn't so long ago Charlie Meth then said something a little bit uh, untoward. He called fans who watch games in the in the pub parasites and everyone obviously reacted to that not in the best way because you know when you're from the northeast sometimes you're quite right oh. too yeah you, yeah, you, you agree. don't react properly with that, that it's, yeah it's the wrong thing yeah i i thought so too and but you know he came out and he said i was wrong he said i was mm. wrong he said totally wrong to say that and i think um a lot of the time previously we had people who wouldn't even have the opportunity to have to say sorry because you wouldn't hear what they actually think yeah, well, well, the other thing is that uh, little issues become big, is, big issues if you if you're not in contact. So, so when people have don't understand the why, they can, they can take the wrong impression. Before you know it, it, it goes around twenty people and, and it's going down the wrong slant. And you've 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 a big job then to turn the story around to what it actually is, because people start not believing you. So, so you really got to say before you do something, 
what you're trying to do, and then everybody knows where you're aiming. And if you get it wrong, they, they, they forgive you. You know, God loves a trier, and I think fans love a try. They love to see that you've got the interests of the uh, club at heart. So, so we're in a different age as well. Uh, the the you know a lot of club chairmen are from an era before social media and Twitter and podcasts and all the rest of it. And uh, you know, so so any any discussion with fans are probably through newspaper and that sort of media. Uh, or writing in programs and what have you, and the world's a lot quicker now, so so things go bad quicker and things things go good quicker. If you can get that message across and uh, and be open and honest, you know, if you've got anything to hide, then don't do it. But if 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 your motives are pure, then then by all means speak to you, speak to everybody involved. And how do you feel? I mean, from an outside looking in, um, I assume. You've seen our our downfall, and you've seen the the previous regime that we had in Ellis Short, and obviously Stewart came in from from Eastleigh, which is obviously a, a, a club below both of us, and he came to Sunderland, which is a, a vastly different club and a vastly different setup. But have you been impressed with how he's gone about the club, and is that what you expected when he took over? I have, I have, and, and and I feel sorry for Ellis Short and and and, and his predecessors. Uh, I mean, what what happens with a football club when you start going down through the leagues? You start having to cut your costs, and the cutting costs cuts morale. Whichever you can't cut costs and not affect morale, so so you're cutting costs, and then your your revenues falling, and fans are losing interest, and and yeah, your revenues falling further, so you cut them further. It becomes a downward self fulfilling. Spiral, uh, and so and so that that break that Stuart got when when Stuart took over gives you it effectively gives you a floor from which you can start to build from, and 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 uh, you know I, I I think I think that's great. You know you you've you've got a great club and you've got everything you need now. You're not massively in debt. You you've got you've got everything you need now to build build back to the uh, Premier League status. And and it, to a smaller degree, that's what we had at Accrington. We had a uh, you know, we we had exactly the same issue where, where things had got that bad. We, we couldn't pay wages, we weren't paying wages. This is no disrespect to anybody that went before me. Uh, yeah. they, they too, they too went, went into similar went into a similar situation whereby you know people start losing interest. You see things going wrong. Uh, you know, when I, when I, when I started, you turn the uh, sprinkles on at half time. You couldn't use the toilets. Well, you could use them once. And then that were it. You couldn't wash your hands, but they have the household domestic supply. I hope you uh, fixed them for Saturday, mind. <laughs> well, well, they've been fixed, and we, you know we're going a long way. We, you know, we're coming a long way down. And 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 I'll be honest, that that pleases everybody because you see that we, you know, we're not building a, a big fancy stadium that's, you know, that 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 would be fitting a Premier League like you've got. You know, we we are, we are still focusing on the basics, as you'll see when you come down. We, we we're focusing on getting the the basic infrastructure. You know, against Wimbledon, your playoffs a couple of years ago, lights went out in the middle of the match because we have a domestic supply. So somebody comes off, we're in extra time. Somebody comes off and switches shower on, and floodlights go off because it's electric shower uh, with no gas. Uh, so, 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 you know, there's, there's, I'm loving hearing this. I, I see. I love this kind of stuff. I, for for me, and it, maybe it's because of where I've come from as a fan, but from the Premier League and the money and the the advertisement and the expensive food, it just like my football club. And maybe it's because I'm from the north, but my football club feels like my family. And I think everyone at something feels like that. And it's for a long time, it's felt like an enemy. And I think, so when you hear this kind of stuff, and it feels like it's a thing when you walk together. I mean, I live in Scotland, so Scottish football has many random things that happen all the time. Yeah. Um, that really is like a, a community-based club. But when you're saying that to me, it, it does it does make you laugh. But at the same time, I bet you fix that all that stuff together. Do you know what I mean? And that makes you feel that makes you feel like you're part of something, doesn't it? Well, I mean, we do, and 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 fans are coming in every week and helping out, and uh, and it's still it's still a community club, and and and, and people have to remember that. Uh, all these clubs are founded by fans and community in the first place, and uh, they, you know they need to remember where they where they're from and where they belong, and uh, why they mean so much to the community. Uh, you know, and I, I, I've, I've, I'm probably boring people when I'm saying a lot of high streets are dying and pubs are being shut and whatever. You. And, and it's a massive social interaction point as a football club now. That that uh, you know when, when there's no game on a Saturday, it's uh, it's a bit boring. You don't know you're twiddling your thumbs. Uh, yeah. You're right on Saturday with the pubs with us lot. <laughs> That's yeah. one thing I can guarantee you. 
Is there well, any you'd recommend? Any pubs you'd recommend we should go to? Well, there's a, there's a few of them. There's Crown Next yeah. to Ground. There's, there's, well, the, the, there's three or four around Ground, and, and I'm not picking one and then missing one out, but there's three or four around Ground that are good. We'll have a marquee up, we'll have a band on where you can, you can get a pint or two. You know, we'll have bars open all around Ground uh, and everybody's welcome. So, so you know, I, I don't think they'll be stuck for somewhere to have a pint. I mean, we're not going to spoil you. <laughs> you, won't, you, won't be, you won't be getting uh, fancy meals or anything. You, you'll be on pie or a burger and, and a pint, and that's a lot, and uh, a cup of tea or something like that. But Sounds uh, good you'll to have me. a great time. <laughs> and the only thing we've discussed this already, the only thing that's frustrating me, what is going on with these trains? Oh, it drives me mad. It drives me mad. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, they're awful. It drives me mad. It, it's like a deliberate uh, attempt to ruin Saturdays. It's all the time we had against Barnsley, and uh, you know, I can't, I can't, for life in me, understand why they can't just get a train running. You know, the, the only job they yeah. have to do is run a train, and they never seem to manage to do it. Uh, you know, it's uh, it drives me mad, and I, and I feel sorry for travelling fans. It just makes life so much harder. Uh, that you, you know, it ends up being planes, trains, and automobiles instead of just a straight forward. <laughs> Get up, get on yeah. and have a couple of tins and, and enjoy a game and, and get on and go home. Uh, so so it just drives me mad. I'm not in charge at trains. Uh, if it, if I was, it, there'd be a lot of trouble. I can guarantee yeah. you that. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sad for uh, fans that are put out by it. Because we have to go to, I think we have to go to Blackburn from Preston or Manchester and then get a, a bus. But we only have to realistically give ourselves an extra hour to get home, don't we? And if I'm right in saying that. Listen, I'm not being held responsible for that. I'd like to, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I come up Manchester to uh, uh, Warley Train, a, a, a little town near Accrington, and uh, that stopped at Blackburn, and they've said it's brought down, and you've had to get off and get a taxi home. So, so it, they're just unreliable. You know, you, you you'd never. It's virtually the winter day goes by where somebody tells me that trains aren't running right round here. <laughs> well, there's, there's no worse. But uh, I mean, one of your one of your guys, uh, a guy called Andy Flashman, mm -hmm. Andy Flatman, sorry, Flashman. My God, he won't thank me for that. A guy called Andy <laughs> Flatman. He, he helped build our stand, the new stand that you lads will be in, and lasses. So, so oh, wow. our old seat to stand. Our new old old seat to stand. He helped build it. So he did all the concrete uh, that you'll be walking on, and all the. Uh, so it's a Sunderland guy that uh, that did it. Uh, oh, and he's done it well. He's done a great job. Yeah, he always does a great job. In fairness, he's done a lot of work for us. He runs his own business, so so he'll be down with all his mates. And uh, I mean, we're all northern folks, so it's going to be a good day. In any case, and we're, we're all yeah. having a pint. I'm having a pint and I'm, and having a good day. And uh, you know, which is why I wanted to go to football in the first place. Yeah, uh, I never wanted to own a club, but now I've got one. I'm going to enjoy it. And. and uh, that, that's one thing I'm, I'm interested in because, uh, I mean, th there's two things, obviously, I, I don't know whether you've ever Googled yourself, but the two options that come up are um, talking about, obviously, you taking over the club, which is a big thing. But one thing be before we go on to that, what was this thing with McDonald's? Oh, well, what, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 uh, when, when, when we, when we f finish the match, we get, we get Domino's pizzas and stuff like that, or a bottle yeah. of full fat coke and all that up bus coming Why up. not? Whether we win or lose, because it's, I think it's a case of get some cheap energy on for us. You know, there's yeah. none of this uh, Michelin three course meals on bus. It's just <laughs> get what you want down. So, so lads will get off bus, and I'll, uh, I'll, if 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 I'm if I've got some money in my pocket, I'll say go and get a couple of bottles of prosecco. Then me and John will have a drink on way home. And uh, so they'll get off, and some will go to McDonald's, some will go and get a pizza, some will go and get. Uh, whatever they get, the Lucas Aids and all the rest of it. And uh, and they'll come back with two bottles of Prosecco. So, so I'll give them 200 quid and I usually get £26.30 back uh, off Sean McConville. <laughs> so, so, you know, and that, it is whether we've won or not, but it is, it's only whenever we're away because that's the only time we're on bus. So, yeah. so uh, anyway, so, as we set off, uh, there's another story there, by the way. Anyway, so, so we get to this... <laughs> we, I, I tweet out, why does Sean Harvey ever give, only ever give me £26.30? Uh, <laughs> the change always comes to £26.30 out of 200 quid. Uh, you know, is this, is this down to luck or is it down to management? And, and, and uh, you know, there are probably only two McDonald's bought out of it. But anyhow, EFL got onto it and said I were overpaying. Uh, it weren't a, a stipulated bonus in players' contracts. So, so 
uh, for food <laughs> for food yeah wow. and uh, so, so that they, they sent me a letter and i and i it were all to believe but strictly speaking if you give them a burger uh you've got to put it in the, as a bonus in the contract now and i don't always do it and when i do do it it's when i feel like it and uh, it's whether they win lose or draw and I explain that and eventually they came round and uh, at the uh, full awards i were presented with a mcdonald's for my dinner <laughs> while everybody else were on steak which i didn't i didn't disagree with. i didn't mind i thought it were fine <laughs> but uh, it seemed to take off the, the whole thing seemed to take off and, and that you know social media is like that it can go mad can't it yeah, it can. And, and as you said before, it can be good, it can be bad, but it certainly seems to be working in, in favour for yourself and Accrington. And, and so far, Sunland and Stuart Donald as well. Now, you mentioned before, and I think you've kind of alluded to a few things that are making me think maybe why, um, but what made you buy Accrington Stanley in the first place? Well, I did, I did, I never, it was never in my plan to own a football club, but uh, uh, it started, I sponsored it because it was struggling and, and I so I sponsored it £200,000 over three years to name the stadium and the shirt. And that's why we ended up being on stadium and, stadium and the shirt in first place. And uh, and I went for friendly and the, the I got one pint and then the, the bar ran out of beer. And uh, and I said, well, where's, you know, I want another pint. I'm here with my lad. And we sat the afternoon, we won a few pints and watched a match. And and it turned out they couldn't, they hadn't got any beer because they hadn't paid the bills. Uh, <laughs> so, and I'm not talking, when I say, no beer. I mean, it was like the it were like the Gobi Desert. They weren't to they weren't to drink anywhere in the place. They'd uh, <laughs> everybody had took all optics that had been emptied and wine and everything had gone and uh, uh, and and they genuinely couldn't couldn't pay. Uh, and that that's not through. You know, these guys were putting every penny. Some some guys put all their their uh, you know the kids and everything in. They did everything to keep the club going. So so don't don't ever think that that's a a disrespect because it's not yep. because it, it's it's through their efforts that we kept that they kept it going anyway the, the chairman then uh peter mars and his joint chairman now he came up and said look andy can you uh you know is there anything you can do i can't pay wages and it and and i don't know how long i can go on i've i've put every penny in i've got and uh you know it's still not enough uh can you help me we can't pay wages so i over a day or two, I, I, I rang Peter and I said, "Look, I'll, I'll put some money in and pay this month's wages, and uh, then I'll look at it. I'll look at it over a month, and if I fancy doing it, then I'll do it. And if I don't, you can consider the money that I put in a gift. And, and I did that because they couldn't possibly pay it back in any case. Uh, so, yeah. so there's no point loaning money to football clubs that have none. You know, it just all it was is prolong the agony. So, so." Uh, I put that in, and then and then over the over the month, I looked. At it, I put I put my accountants in to look at the financials uh, that were horrendous, and uh, and I went in and looked at the club as a as a as an entity, and uh, and I got to meet the community trust, the academy, the supporters club, and the first team and the managers, and uh, you know it, it does so much good for the town it's a founding member at Football League and it does so much good. It interacts with 15,000 people. It looks after kids from two-year-old learning to kick the first ball right through to disabled sports and, uh, you know, walking football at the other end and probably my end. So, so you, you know, it does so much in ten. It deals with uh, drug health awareness and sexual yeah. health awareness and all, all host of things that... Uh, you know, they, they would just disappear if I couldn't just they disappeared. And apart from that, you, you've got a, a club that were there when Queen Victoria were alive, disappearing yeah. off face of earth. You know, and, and uh, for me, it, it became the the cost of it became secondary to the uh, to the requirement to to save it as a and keep it as an asset for the town. So, so the way I look at my job and my MO is to make it so that it's still solvent in 50 years when I'm dust blowing in the wind. You know, that's why we won't over, overdo it. We're just going to give it great facilities, basic facilities, low, low overhead facilities and things that it can generate cash out to keep it going. Whatever league it's in, you know, whether it's in championship, premiership or non-league or wherever it finds itself in the next 50 years. So, so, so that's, that's the job. That I took on. Now I was told or advised against it uh, by the uh, by my accountants, lawyers, my wife, my kids. Everybody said, "Whatever you do, don't do it. It's a road to ruin. It's a disaster." And, and uh, but but 
the, the the downside of not doing it were just you know it just felt so bad to you know that i could possibly help to just leave it so i yeah. said look i'm doing it and, and in fairness to everybody when i said i'm doing it they all they all got behind me so i, I was really fortunate in that respect you know they soon they soon said look okay if you're doing it we're, we're we'll muck in and it, you know there's a lot of arguments going forward from them because there were so many issues that needed sorting out but uh, we're past that now we're past the saving its life and we're into the growing it you know growing the club now so you know it's uh, it's well publicized that we we give 1200 shirts to every eight year old every year so everybody that gets to year three uh at all the schools 40 schools it's 1200 shirts uh get a free first team shirt off us every year and, and we've done it twice now and we're going to keep doing it year in year out so that all the kids in the town start to get an affinity i don't understand that accrington's there because it the club had got that for that kind of behind in terms of cash and it, it couldn't really interact with community probably you know it, it yeah it, it had stopped doing all the things that it were good at because we we're in survival mode uh and and uh so, so now we've got kids. You know, we've got we're giving shirts to school kids, and and uh, in fact, some of the parents coming up to me on match day and said, "Look, you've cost me hundred quid since you give my child that shirt. <laughs> she, she, she's it's she's, got me, she's got me coming every week. So it is working. And we, we, now we're growing. We're growing it as a club into, uh, you know, into a, into a nice a nice little club. You know, and and, and I think we're a great club. I, I don't see us as a little club. I see us as a fantastic. Uh, you know, our club relative to our town size so i think we have about thirty five thousand population and and we'll have four thousand five thousand four hundred on on uh on on uh saturday so a two thousand eight hundred which is probably about eight percent of population yeah um, which is not bad at all and you've got to have the interest with that and you've got to have the community buy-in and i think i think what you're doing i think is bang on i think you know i remember when i was growing up the reason i love sunland is because of nostalgia when i was young it was kind of born into me I think kids don't really get that these days, and, you, and you're right in what you're saying. You wouldn't have had, you wouldn't have had the, the the finances maybe to get out into the community. And I think, as you said, you know, clubs like ourselves and and Accrington as well. Like you are a community club. That's what you base yourself on. I think that's the north, isn't it? That's just the way we are. It is. I mean, it's. I mean, Sunderland's a, a great place. I know a lot of people up there. You know, in fact, when we come up to your place, I'm probably going to be stopping up there and going having a few pints in town with my mates. Uh, I can recommend because, many good places. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I mean, that's what we like. It's, it's. I mean, it's great. It's great up there, and it's great round here. You know, everybody. It, it is northern life, and uh, you know, as I say, bring your big coat. But I don't need to say that much to you guys up there because uh, <laughs> nope. you know, if anybody is used to not having needing a big coat, it, it's you guys. So, so, so. I mean, we are what we are, and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm going back to that. Just for, say, going back to that burger. Uh, and here we, we've gone. Then we've played. I think we played Northampton, and all lads get off bus. And uh, I've got my little lad on bus. I say little lad about 15, 14, I think you were then. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they've got off, and and they've actually gone each shop up lads, and me, my son's gone and got a McDonald's. And here, so lads have all got up bus and I'm sat in a bottle of Prosecco with Corley. <laughs> and we're, we're driving down the road up bus singing songs because I think we'd, uh, we'd won. So so we're singing songs up over a bottle of uh, Prosecco radio. <laughs> and my and phone my phone rings and, and I looked at it and uh, it's it's my son. So I turned it off because it, it's one of them that would ring you from upstairs at home and you know, oh, yeah. can't bother to come downstairs. So I thought, he's not back at <laughs> bus, what's he doing? Anyway, it, it, it happens about three or four times, his phone ringing and... Uh, when, when I finally picked it up, he was 20 miles away, still in Northampton, and we had to turn team bus back and get him. So I lost, <laughs> I lost my own son as a result of football. And uh, so, yeah. so you pay a big price. <laughs> yeah, you do. Oh, losing family members is quite a huge price, mate. Most hey, well, you you're doing well with wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Moving on to the match, you won last night, didn't you? Beat Lincoln on penalties, is that right? We did, yeah. We did. So, we're both into the next round of the checker trade, but I, I, don't, want to, I don't need to pick any favourites, but based on current form, who do the Sunderland fans need to watch out for on Saturday? Well, obviously, you've got Zanzala that's uh, yeah. that's on fire, but you've, you've got Jordan Clark and, and Sean McConville. Uh, got got a, got a couple of, couple of lads from uh, Newcastle. In Dunbar, Lassa. Oh, you can't uh, swear on this podcast. And he, and he, he's 
he's he's great. We've got obviously we've got Billy Key. Uh, yeah. We, I'll be honest. We, we we've got some great names in our squad. I, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of somebody that uh, I've told you not to worry about, and I can't. Yeah. Because uh, you know we, we're we're fairly tidy all, all round uh, on his day. I mean, I think I'm, I think on Saturday it's going to be a fair game. Uh, no, I think so too. I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be a walkover for for us anyhow. But I, I don't think it'll be perhaps as easy as the stats and say for for yourselves. I think we'll give you a fair game. I'm hoping so. Yeah, no, we thought we've there's not been many games this season that have been easy. As much as we've only lost one on paper, like there's been a lot of games that have been tough. They've all been they've all been tough slogs, and I think that's what this league is. I think and we're just quite lucky that we've managed to grind something out in games like Walsall the other week went down to ten men and pulling something back. But that's all about team spirit, not quality, yeah. I think, you know. So well, team spirit, team spirit, and your budget are the two things that are you know that you add them together and it equals your available resources. It's not just about yeah. money, and it's not just about team spirit. You know, you between them, and we we have masses of team spirit and and a little bit of money. You'll probably have uh, a bit more money and, and and team spirit as well, and and that's that's going to be the judge. And uh, on the day, you know, people don't like coming to Accrington, pitch slopes a bit, and change your rooms on to on particularly nice uh not got around to do, doing them up yet because there's bigger priorities you know we've got 5,400 yeah. people to look after first uh of famously Roy Hodgson wouldn't uh, let his West Brom team ch- get changed in our changing rooms he took him to a local hotel and got him to get changed there which uh, <laughs> well he just his change rooms aren't very clever so he, he said I'm not changing there uh, which which were funny, and then and then Tony Pulis <laughs> came. We we West Brom a few years later, and and his, he said, well, it'll do him good. Our Premier League uh, <laughs> change there, so, yes. so it's two different two different ways of looking at it, and uh, uh, yeah, you know, I I, I think uh, I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be a really good game, um, and I know it's going to be a great atmosphere. Our atmosphere will be. Uh, I have a funny feeling it'd be as good as yours up there because we have low rooms. Some what yeah. part of it isn't room, by the way, at the minute. So I just just remember to tell everybody to bring the big coats. Yeah, uh, fact. <laughs> so I like to get that in because it's. Uh, I don't want them getting drowned. If if I could put a roof over it by magic, I would do, but I can't. You know, I'm doing all I can. Yeah, uh, but but the atmosphere it's low rooms and and the atmosphere resounds around it. It'd be a fantastic. Uh, you know, you really love the the old fashioned. Way of playing, you know. Stewards are friendly. It's uh, you know they they pride themselves in, in letters they get of people saying you know thanks for looking after me and you know they're more likely to shake your hand and say how are you than uh, than they are to push you around like you get yeah. at some places and uh, you know yeah. it, it reduces tension. It uh, does. Are you are you ready for any pitch invasions though after us the other week? <laughs> well, I, 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 what I really want, I, the important thing to me, believe it or not, and uh, it is is that everybody has a great day and it's a safe day. You know, we yeah. we have we have we our you're judged by police on on uh, really the the amount of aggro you give over a season. So 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 they have a league table as it were. So they give you points for your goodness or your badness. That's that's called the goodness badness scale. I've just invented that, by the way. <laughs> uh, so, so, so if you're fairly bad, fans, good name. Catch on. <laughs> if you're if you're always fans that are causing trouble and causing aggro, you get a bad score. And and if you're good, if you if you don't have much aggro, you get a good score. So we have a really good score, and that allows our fans to mix with your fans. So yeah. outside the ground, we can all mix and have a beer together like we do with arms, and it's no problem. And, and that's how we want it. And end again, yeah. win, lose, or draw. We just shake hands and say, "Look, it's been fantastic." You know, it's a dream for us, and, and hopefully, it's something that you might, well, you might never uh, repeat it. You know, it might be another hundred years before you get here again, hundred and twenty years or whatever it were. Uh, it, I know it was Victorian times when you when we last played you. Yeah, so, it was a little while ago. I, it I searched it before. It was quite a while ago, yes. <laughs> well, I mean, so it is a truly unique moment, and and mm-hmm. uh, you know, I want, I want, I want us to think that we, we've all, you know, we've all been blessed with something special uh, in this yeah. match, and uh, you know, we can go away, take it, take it away, and think, well, you know, chances of we might not play each other for another in, in anybody's lifetime again. You never know. So, so to really make most of it, and I just have a fantastic day. We'll put a band on, and we'll all get singing and have a few pints, and and. Uh, uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be a great day, you, you know. It's how and, it should be, isn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, it's how it should be, and it's how, it's how I want it to be. You know, I want to yeah. keep. We, we've been able to give you two thousand six hundred uh, because of our record. You know, police have said, "Look, you have no aggro. We know that most of them are great." So, so, so it can be a low, a low resource and a low uh, ticket uh, in terms of policing and everything else, be- because of who we are and who you are. We know the clubs, and there's no history of any aggro or anything like that. So, so, you know, I want to keep that, and I want, I want to. You know, I don't want to give you only a thousand seats because you know everybody's expecting trouble, which is what you get, and you know it's, that's the sort of attitude you get on some matches, you mm-hmm. know, from from police and authorities. So I just want us to have a really great day, and uh, I'll certainly be around with all Sunderland fans and our fans uh, before and after match, having an after and having a pint, and uh, you know they can they can say what they want to me and have a bit of fun. Uh, <laughs> it's brilliant. It will. It'll be fun. But before I let you go, I've got to do what I always do with every guest. And I know you're going to swing towards Acton because everyone would do that. But what's your predictions on Saturday? 2-1 to us. 2-1 to you. I'll take 2-1 to us. Just to, just to even it out. All right. Well, well I'm not like to bet on football. So, so no. I, I'll, I will, there'll be no money on it. It's just a, it's just a friendly bet. And we'll, we'll see where we are. I mean, 2-1, I'm, I'm, being, uh, I'm being generous because I, I don't think you're going to get any. We've got Conor Ripley, you call, you know, from uh, from Middle Borough. Middle. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've got we've got a decent goalie. We've got we've got a good back four. So, so no, I'm joking. I, I think two. <laughs> I wouldn't be happy with that. Not travelling from Scotland, so I'm hoping it's my prediction. That's right. But uh, either way, I'm, I'll tell you now. I'll check you on the end of it. Yeah, same, same, mate. I will do. I'll hold you to that because I heard that you buy Prosecco, so I'm, I'm definitely shaking you. <laughs> <You're wrong, laughs> you're wrong. You consider that a, a, a deal. Give us a shout out there. I will do. I definitely will do, actually, mate. But it's been um, it's been really nice to chat. Actually, it's been really, really lovely. It's nice to speak to. You. And it, it's a, I hate to sound like sometimes it can be patronising because sometimes it can come across like that. But I've really enjoyed League One. I've really enjoyed chatting to to fans of of clubs that genuinely care about their club. Like I spoke to a Warsaw fan twice last week, and he said, you know, we've got. Birmingham, we've got Villa, we've got Wolves around us. If you like Walsall, you like Walsall because you like Walsall. And it's been really, really good fun. But you know what's been really nice is that I kind of forgot I was speaking to the chairman. It feels like I was speaking to a fan of the football club. And you well, definitely are. I think <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I'm a fan before I'm a chairman. I'm chair, only a chairman because I've nobody else to do it. We can't <laughs> Listen, it, it, League One, the beauty of League One for you is that, that and us for that matter, is that every game you go into, you, you, you know, you have a good chance of winning it and, and it makes it more enjoyable than week it after does, yeah. week, things getting thrown in your face and morale being low. And, and, and once you've turned that corner like you have done now and, and you say you've been beat once, I've never checked your stats before again, but I, 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 that sounds about right. You've been yeah. beat once this season and, uh, you know, you've, you're rebuilding a base to grow from. So, so you have a good chance of getting promoted this year. And when you do, you'll do exactly opposite to what you've done in the last few years. Your debt's been cut. You've got a new owner, a, a clean uh, a clean slate. And and, uh, and Stuart will, will no doubt... Uh, keep you up to date with what he's doing and I th- I'd like to think this is a new way of chairman operating so that, so that uh, fans do feel part of it and they do feel like they've got some some say in what goes on rather than it being done to them you know you don't, everybody does things to fans rather than does things with them uh, yeah. I mean we are nothing without fans and that goes for Sunderland as well as us uh, you know so, so we, we need supporters to uh, get behind us and, and we certainly need them on Saturday we'll need them on Saturday and uh, to, to, to be a 12 man uh, and and I'm I'm sure you 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 know you you're only two stops away from Premier League now and and uh, you're looking in the right direction. It, it, sometimes it's great when you go, you know, when you finally hit the floor because you can start rebuild from there. Yeah, it's not like that. Yeah, and I think I think that's what you've done in fairness. And I'm not being disrespectful to not previous orders or anything. It, it's a fact that now now you, you know you, you only fall so far, and then and then you, you set up and start building. Uh, again, and, and and that's where you are. It's fantastic uh, uh, area of country, northeast, brilliant, great, great crack. You know, really, really great area. Football mad, great stadium. I mean, you you, you were looking Sunderland are looking to get uh, forty thousand on on Boxing Day. Boxing Day, I'm told. Uh, support, and uh, when I started in two thousand and fifteen, our total. Uh, visiting fans, total fans entirely, home and away, were thirty-seven thousand uh, for, for the year. 
Jeez. That was for the year. So you'll do more in one match than we were doing in a year. And of them, 37,000, 4,500 were free. They were scouts or away directors or managers or uh, or or everything else that goes with it, community trust stuff and all that carry on. So, so in paying gas, we had uh, about uh, 32,500 when I started in a year. That included cup matches and everything. So, so you'll see why. 5,400 on Saturday it represents a massive step up to us and uh, you know it's it's fantastic and I really appreciate uh, Sunderland fans you know getting behind it and, and, and buying the tickets because every penny counts as you'll see when you come down yep no I'm pleased to do so and I'm, I'm like I said before I'm really looking forward to Saturday and I hope you are as well but I'm not going to lie I hope you have I hope you don't celebrate three points I hope you have a bit of sadness with that <laughs> well, listen, listen. I want to, it, but whatever. I'm, I'm proud of what we're doing here. I'm proud of this club. Mm, I'm proud so of the effort that we're going. And, and, uh, and I'm, I, I really can't wait. I'll be down there early on a Saturday. I can't wait. I'm like a child waiting for Christmas morning. Uh, this is, this is what we, you know, this is. What, it's like a big cup title, was effectively. It's like you know, because because the names we come across aren't Sunderland. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like. Uh, it's like winning winning a major end of FA Cup to get a game like this, like we did against West Ham, for example. It's uh, so so it's brilliant, and and I'm, I, you know, you're a great club, and we're a great club. We're a founding member at football league, and and we're we run our way back from uh, the wilderness. We we in his own small way, you know, not in a not in a in a Sunderland way, but uh, we're on his way back, and I'm, I'm really proud of what we're doing, and I'm proud of uh, as little club, and everybody that works in it. You know, they've done a great job and they've all had to be, in fairness to them, they've had a bit of stick for the last two or three years because we've had to change how we operate. We've had to do things that, uh, you know, people people that have worked for nothing for many years have had to do different things that, you know, probably probably irked them. You know, we, yeah. we've had to start being a bit more uh, organised, a bit more professional in how we operate and, uh, you know, they've all, they've all knuckled down on and off the pitch and, and full credit to them all. That they're they're a credit to me anyway. That's for sure. I'm I'm really proud of what we've done and what we've got. Well, hopefully, I get to envision it all myself if the uh, the train sort themselves out for Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> but, but if not, think... if you ring me, I'll I'll tell you when we're one nil up. <laughs> you, get, you get stuck on that bus. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for well, coming on, and been really really good, crack mate. Genuinely, any tap, any tap at all, and uh, whatever happens, is a repeating on February sixteenth. I think it is. There is, yes. So, so you know, we, uh, we'll be up at the uh, uh, stadium alight, and and I, I'll be honest, I, I do have an habit of going in the, in with the away fans. So, so I'm not deciding what I'm going to do up there. I'll be up uh, in the gods, so don't well, don't. Will it be up jump. in the gods? <laughs> you know that drives me mad. That. That <laughs> mad. When you come to us, we're giving you really great seats. We 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 yeah. believe that whatever seats we've got, they're the best. After us, you get, and you go to some clubs and they stick your right in corner, so you can't really see what's going on. And uh, it's not like, a good view. Right, well, <laughs> I'm aware with Stuart and tell him if there's a better view to at least give it to us. <laughs> so, so look after if you listen to me, we'll look after you. <laughs> Have a good rest of the week. I'm sure we'll speak before Saturday and maybe after Saturday. Um, enjoy your, your trip up to the stadium light when it comes along. But thanks so much for coming on, mate. Really no appreciate problem that. At all. Look after yourself, take it easy. You as well, Andy, mate. Look after yeah, yourself. Ta-da. Bye. Ta-da, mate. Bye. That was really good crack. Um, really enjoyed that. I hope you did as well. A little bit different, getting chairman on, wasn't it? Um, it? And it's weird that it's the second chairman we've had on and the first one was ours. Let's rewind back a year, eh? Uh, imagine getting a, a championship chairman coming on, talking as passionately about his club and then getting Ella Short on a podcast. Not going to happen, is it? Um, but yeah, just another reason I'm loving League One. Brilliant. Um, sitting here on my bloody phone because my laptop broke chatting to the chairman of Acton and Stanley about our game on Saturday. And I'm really buzzing for Saturday, actually. I'm really, really buzzing for it. I think it's going to be great. But thanks again for tuning in. Um, you're probably going to hear this before the Phil Bosley podcast comes out, which I did the other day. Um, I really hope you enjoy that as well. Really excited to do that. I was really excited to do it today also. Um, and I think both both blokes were absolutely cracking. Bardo obviously is Bardo, and I think Andy is brilliant. Um, and I think he really did showcase what a community can do, no matter what size of club you are, whether you're the size of us with a forty thousand, forty eight thousand, sorry, seat a stadium, or Acton where you got five thousand community and 
everyone believing in the same thing just seems to have the right results, doesn't it? Um, and I think that realistically is what we've loved since Stewart's come in. Um, but I hope you enjoyed listening to him. I certainly did. Um, as you can tell, I shut my mouth and let him speak because he was uh, very enjoyable to listen to. Um, hopefully see some of you on Saturday. Come say hello if you do. I'm coming down by myself from Glasgow. Got a few friends that I'm meeting down there. But if any of you know my face, come say hello. I'm sporting a rather, rather good-looking moustache at the moment, if I do say so myself. Um, and thanks for checking in the Rocker Report Extra. Look after yourself, lads and lasses. Bye-bye.